day, viewers. My name is Agali Belinda Chizov, and I'm teaching you on the subject chemistry and the topic Faraday's first law of electrolysis. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to state the first law of Faraday, solve problems involving Faraday's first law of electrolysis, and sketch a graph to verify Faraday's first law of electrolysis. Like of Faraday studied the effect of electricity on different substances and came with the laws of electrolysis which are named after him. Faraday's first law of electrolysis. Faraday's first law of electrolysis states that the mass of an element liberated or deposited during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity that passes through the electrolyte. Mathematically, you can say that mass varies directly as Q where mass is deposited in grams and Q is the quantity of electricity passed in columns. Quantity of electricity Q is equal to current I in amperes times time T in seconds. Since Q is equal to IT, we can say that M varies directly as I times T and M is equal to KIT, where K is a constant of proportionality or chemical equivalent. Worked examples. A current of 0.72 amperes was passed through a solution of an electrolyte for 3 hours 20 minutes. Calculate the quantity of electricity that was passed. Since we know that Q is equal to I times T, we convert our 3 hours 20 minutes to seconds and then multiply by the number of amperes we have to give us 8,640 columns. Number two, how many columns of electricity will be produced if a current of 0.5 amperes flows for one hour? We know that Q is equal to I times T. Therefore, the quantity of electricity will be equal to 0.4 times 60 times 60 to give us 1,440 columns. Number three, what time in minutes will it take 9,600 columns of electricity to be produced? when a current of 1.60 amperes is used. Q is equal to I times T. Therefore, 9,600 columns is equal to 1.60 multiplied by T. 9,600 divided by 1.6 is equal to T. Therefore, T is equal to 600 seconds. Since the equation says the time in minutes, you convert 6,000 seconds to minutes. So, give you 100 uh, minutes. Number four, calculate the chemical equivalent of copper, given that 0.5 amperes of electricity passes through copper tetrahydrosulfate 6 solution for 10 minutes, depositing 0.04 gram of copper. You know that M is equal to KIT. That means that uh, K is equal to M divided by I times T. We convert our time to seconds. And then we have 0.04 divided by 0.5 times 600 to give us 0.00013 gram per column. In theory, the quantity of electricity required for the passage of one mole of electrons is 96,500 columns. This quantity of electricity is called 1 Faraday, 1F. That is 1 Faraday is equal to 96,500 columns. For a monovalent metal such as sodium and silver, one Faraday will deposit one mole of the metal. What it means is that for you to get one mole of sodium or one mole of silver, you need 96,500 columns. For a divalent metal such as copper and calcium, two Faradays will deposit one mole of the metal. What I say is that two times 96,500 will deposit one mole of copper or calcium. For diatomic monovalent elements such as hydrogen and chlorine, 2F will also deposit one mole of the element. For a trivalent metal such as aluminum, 3F will deposit one mole of the metal. Now, for a diatomic bivalent element such as oxygen, 4F will be required to deposit one molecule of the element. It follows that for a metal with charge C, MC plus C Faraday's will be required to deposit one mole of it. 
Recall that one mole of a chemical substance is the relative molar mass M expressed in grams. That is, molar mass of a chemical substance is equal to M gram per mole. This means that in order to liberate or deposit one mole of an element with charge C, the number of Faradays required is C Faradays. The quantity of electricity required to discharge one mole of ions of an element is directly proportional to the charge on the ion. And one mole of ions corresponds to the Avogadro's constant, which is equal to 6.02 times 10 raised to the power of 23 per mole. From Faraday's first law, which we know that M is equal to KIT, and we know that K is equal to M over IT, or 1 over K is equal to IT over M. Let us call that equation, equation 1. In order to liberate or deposit one mole of an element with charge C, the number of Faradays of electricity required is charge multiplied by Faraday. That is CF over M. We can call that equation 2. If we combine equation 1 and 2, we have that IT over M is equal to CF over capital M. Rearranging it, we can say that IT over CF is equal to small m over m. Where m is equal to mass of the element liberated or deposited in grams, capital M is molar mass of the element, I is current in amperes, T is time in seconds, C is charge on the element, YF is equal to Faraday, which is 96,500 coulombs. Solve the examples. A current of 0 0.20 amperes flowed through silver nitrate solution during an electrolytic process that lasted for 30 minutes. Calculate the mass of silver deposited. They give us the molar mass of silver to be 108 and 1 Faraday to be 96,500 columns. Solution. For you to solve problem involving masses liberated, you have to know how to write a simple half cell equation. We have silver, which is a monovalent uh, atom, will accept one electron to deposit the silver. And using IT over CF equal to M over M, and making M sort of formula, we have that M is equal to IT times M all over CF. And if you substitute properly, you will get 0 0.403 grams. Or Another way of solving it, since Q is equal to I times T, that means that 0 0.20 amperes flowing for 30 minutes will require 360 columns of uh, electricity. So if 96,500 columns liberates 108 grams, then 360 will liberate 108 times 360 divided by 96,500 to so give you the same answer as 0 0.403 grams. Another example, determine the mass of copper deposited by 4.0 moles of electrons in a reaction represented by the equation below, where the molar mass of copper is 64. Solution. From the equation, 2 moles of electrons deposits 1 mole of copper. Therefore, 4 moles will deposit 64, which is the molar mass of copper, multiplied by 4 divided by 2 to give you 128 gram. What mass of magnesium will be obtained by passing a current of 2 amperes for 2 hours 30 minutes through molten magnesium chloride? They give us 1F to be 96,500 and molar mass of magnesium to be 24. Solution, you first of all write the equation for the reaction. You know that magnesium is a divalent uh, atom. Therefore, it requires two electrons for it to be deposited. And using this formula and making M sort of formula, we have uh, 2 multiplied by 150 multiplied by 60 by 24 divided by 2 times 96,500 to give us 2.24 gram. Or you can do it the other way around. Q is equal to I times T. So Q is equal to 18,000 columns. Since magnesium is divalent and 2 Faradays is required to liberate 24 grams, therefore 18,000 columns will de deposit 2.24 grams. 0.222 gram 
of a divalent metal is deposited, when a current of 0.45 amperes is passed through a solution of its source for 25 minutes using platinum electrodes, calculate the relative atomic mass of the metal. Remember that one Faraday is equal to 96,500 coulombs per mole. Using this formula, where IT over CF is equal to mass over molar mass, and making molar mass rate of formula, we have CF multiplied by M divided by I times T. If you substitute well and punch the calculator, you get 63.5 gram as the molar mass of copper. Calculate the volume of oxygen evolved at STP when a current of 2.5 amperes is passed through dilute tetraoxys of a 6 acid for 2 minutes. Remember the molar volume of any gas at standard temperature and pressure is 22.4 dm cubed. Why 1 Faraday is 96,500 coulombs? Solution. Since for oxygen gas to be evolved, 4 Faradays of electricity is used and molar volume is 22.4 dm cube. And using this, since we are looking for the mass, we have um, 2.5, which is the current used, multiplied by 2 times 60, which is the, num uh, the time and we pass the current, multiply by 22.4, divided by 4 times 96,500. At the end of the day, we have 0 0.174 dm cube. To verify Faraday's law, we are going to use the electrolysis of copper sulfate using copper electrodes. Two dry copper plates are dried and weighed accurately and the ammeter is adjusted to about 0.2 amperes and time noted. The electrolysis is allowed to go on for exactly 10 minutes or 600 seconds and the current is switched off. The cathode is removed, dried and weighed. The difference between the masses of the cathode before and after electrolytic process gives the mass of the copper deposited at the cathode. Similarly, the difference between the masses of the anode before and after the electrolytic processes gives the loss in mass of copper at the anode. Repeat the experiment using another set of electrodes and passing the same current of 0.2 amperes for the following periods of times 1,200 seconds, 1,800 seconds, and 2,400 seconds. If we have this hypothetical set of data, Assuming that after passing for 600 seconds, we have mass gain in cathode to be 0.04 gram and mass loss in anode to be 0.04 gram. And we get it for the, all the times that we used it and plot a graph. The following observations can be made from our table. The mass of copper deposited at the cathode or lost at the anode increases as the time of passage of the same electric current increases. The gain in mass of the cathode is equal to the loss in the mass of the anode when the same current of 0.20 amperes is passed for any period of time. A plot of the graph of mass of copper deposited at the cathode against time gives a straight line uh, graph. You can see the graph here. As you are increasing it, the gain in mass is also increasing. Now let us evaluate ourselves by solving these problems. A current of 0.272 amperes was passed through a solution of an electrolyte for 3 hours, 20 minutes. Calculate the quantity of electricity that was passed. You simply do Q is equal to I times T. Remember to change the minutes to seconds. Number 2. State Faraday's first law of electrolysis. Number 3. How many columns of electricity will be produced? If a current of 0.4 amperes flows for now one hour, you also use Q is equal to I times T and change your hours to seconds. Number four, calculate the time it will take 9,600 coulombs of electricity to be produced when a current of 1.60 amperes is used. Since Q is equal to I times T, make T sort of formula and then you find the time it will take for this to be passed. Number five, what quantity of electricity will liberate 0.125 mole of oxygen molecules during the electrolysis of dilute sodium chloride solution? 
Since 96,500, we we'll deposit uh, one more. And the oxygen requires 4F. That means that 4 times 96,500 will give us uh, one more. You now find the quantity that will liberate 0.125 more. Number six, calculate the amount of current that must flow for 30 minutes through a solution of copper two tetravis of a six solution to deposit 0.8 gram of copper. Just do Q is equal to I times T and make I subject of formula. We have come to the end of our lesson and by the time you complete your evaluation, you can calculate anything under Faraday's first law of electrolysis. Thank you for listening. Thank you.